Hi everyone. Thanks for coming back to Novel Idea. My name is Dia and today I am going to do a Friday Reads. Alright, so I don't think I'm going to try to do this in any particular order. Um, I'll probably just maybe tell you what I didn't like and then maybe we'll go into the ones that I really did enjoy and we'll get through them fairly quickly. All right, you guys, sorry about the lighting change. I have um, re-recorded this. This will be my third time that I'm recording this video. So um, yeah, let's just get into it. So my first book is The Once and Future King by T.H. White. I, um, this is four books bound up in one. They are Arthurian legend retellings. Um, the first book is The Sword in the Stone, and I really enjoy The Sword in the Stone. It was my favorite out of the four books. Um, it was unexpectedly funny. It was um, just so much fun, completely appropriate humor. Um, so uh, boy-esque <laughs> in its in its humor. It's about Arthur's childhood, who is not Arthur at the time, and his foster brother and all of their antics and shenanigans that they get up to. And um, it's just really, really fun. So that book I thoroughly enjoyed and I gave it a 90%. It's an A minus. And um, then we moved into uh, The Witch in the Wood. The Witch in the Wood is a story about four brothers who live on an island off the coast of Britain and they live with their mother who is um, a bit psychotic. <laughs> um, yeah, she is raising them to hate all of the Pendragons. And it's a story kind of, of that is going to weave into Arthur's story later. And um, it still has an extremely absurd tone. It deals with some pretty heavy subjects, dark subjects. And the humor was just completely inappropriate, in my opinion. I just, I just did not like this book at all. I didn't want to go on after I read this. Um, I gave it a C minus. It was a 70%. We moved into The Ill-Made Night. Uh, that's the third book. And... This one was a 73%. It was a C, a very low C. Um, it is mm, the story of um, Arthur kind of coming into his own. It's the beginning of Arthur and Guinevere. It's the beginning of the round table. And of course, Lancelot and Guinevere. And it's much more about Lancelot than it is about Guinevere, but he takes kind of a tonal shift in his writing of this story. And I'm pretty sure that he's trying to make it feel a bit more adult, a bit more grown up because the characters are growing up, but it just doesn't work. He doesn't succeed. Well, is extremely ludicrous and farcical in what he has to say and how he says it and he just it just wasn't good i just did not like it um the book does end with a bit more prudence but then we move into A Candle in the Wind, which is the end book. It's book four. Um, and I knew 
I needed to read it or not needed to, but I knew that I was going to be disappointed to just give up after book three. I'd already committed so much time. Um, however, Candle in the Wind was my least favorite. It was a D for me. It was a 63%. Um, it is war. It is um, the end of Arthur, the end of Guinevere, the end of the round table. Um, it's the worst thing about this book for me was that White himself um, used it as a platform for his own politics and what he had to say about certain things. And he used Merlin because Merlin lives a really long time. And so he used Merlin to do that and it, oh, it just did not sit well with me. I, I just did not like it. I didn't agree with him. Um, I felt put upon. I felt trapped by the fact that I'm reading this book and then suddenly I am in his little diatribe. Yeah, anyway. Overall, the book was a very low C um, as a whole. So Once in Future King, bind up of the four, um, would not recommend. <laughs> um, there are much better Arthurian retellings than this. And um, the Sword in the Stone, I would recommend. So the first book in here is well worth your time. But everything else, I wouldn't, I wouldn't touch it. Okay, let's move on. Let's see, where am I? Okay, so then I also read um, the next two books in Terry Blackstock's If I Run series. And that is If I'm Found, or If I Am Found, and If I Live. And the whole series was probably um, a mid-level C for me. I don't think it needed to be three books. I think that these books are short enough that number one, it could have just been one book. And number two, the middle book, the If I Am Found, I don't, I don't think it needed to be written at all. Um, there was nothing new that it added to the story other than to just draw it out. So um, if there are key points in that book, I feel like those key points could have been covered in the first and second book put together. So that was only a C read for me. And um, Terry Blackstock is a Christian genre love and mystery author. Um, there is a little love story in it, a very, very um, bubblegum kind of love story in the series, and uh, it's very overtly Christian, so if that's not your thing, you know, don't, don't pick it up. Um, but like I said, overall, uh, um, it's not something I'll ever pick up again. Okay. Let's move on. The Mountain Sing. And this is by Nguyen Phan Kwe Mai. Don't know if I said that right. I looked it up. I tried. <laughs> um, so, um, The Mountain Sing is about one family and their kind of journey through the Vietnam War and living in North Communist Vietnam. Um, there are two main points of view, and that is a little girl whose name is Guava and her grandmother. 
and you really need to pay attention to the um, subtitles of the chapter title because it's going to tell you the time frame and that is going to tell you um, that one or the other of them is talking. Um, because it confused me at first to um, try to keep track of that. I, I wasn't getting it and then I saw the subtitle of the chapter and then I was keeping up with it. It was, I was getting on track with it. Um, it's written in a way that is a very clear picture of where you are. Her writing is beautiful. Um, it's a really good story, but the, the, uh, flashbacks, um, from her grandmother, like I said, kind of it detracted for me at least at first because um, I just wasn't aware that that was actually happening so um, you guys probably won't have that issue in reading it because you heard it here first <laughs> I wanted to read you a quote because I thought it was so beautiful um, the hardships endured by the Vietnamese people were as tall as the tallest mountain. I have stood far enough away from that mountain now to see the peak of it. I have also stood close enough to the mountain to witness how much of a mountain my grandmother was herself. Always there, always strong, always protected. I just thought that was so pretty. It's so beautiful. Um, it, that's very much the feel of the book, too. It's that um, the grandmother is, is the protector, the defender. She is the safe harbor and uh, the glue of family members. Um, it's just beautiful. It's a really beautiful story. So uh, that was a A minus, 91% from me. And I think if I would have known about the subheadings um, of the chapters that it may have gotten a little bit more of a, of a grade, a, a little higher grade from me. Okay, so before I went on to Candle in the Wind of the uh, once and future king, I needed a break. <laughs> I did not want to pick it up. So I read another cozy corgi mystery. It's called Traitor's Traitorous Toys. And um, it is book two in the series, but it's a Christmas <laughs> book. And I was not expecting that, but um, and it felt a little weird in June to be reading a Christmas story. But um, I needed I needed the break from Once a Future King. So um, I read it. It is not as, as Corgi-esque as the first one. There aren't as many Corgi qualities to it. Um, and it wasn't quite as easy to figure out, but I think that the reason for that is because we aren't introduced to everybody right away. So you can't, you can't say, oh, that's the murderer if you haven't been introduced to him. It, it was a B. It was an 84%. It just it wasn't quite what I was hoping for. As also was the next one. The next one is uh, Rotten to the Core by Sheila Connolly. And this also was supposed to be a cozy mystery, but it ended up being a like a commentary on the integration, evils, goods of pesticide use <laughs> in an orchard. <laughs> So this one is set in the um, 
orchards of the northern Midwest of America. So like I said when in my uh, pile of possibilities video, this was something that I found while looking for another book of the same name. And um, my library happened to have it. So I went ahead and read it. It was a fast read. It was, um, I think it was well written. It just was more the commentary on pesticides than it was mystery. I mean, I liked it. I just wasn't interested in pesticide use <laughs> or the lack thereof or the integration of it sometimes. <laughs> so it was a B minus. It was an 82%. And um, I probably won't continue with that series. Um, okay, so the next one that I read was Age of Legend. And this is book four in Michael J. Sullivan's um, Legends of the First Empire series. And I am loving it. Um, we're with the same set of characters uh, that we left off book three with. Um, this one is, was not as hard emotionally as books two and three were for me. Um, it was still hard, but I think if, <laughs> if you go into a Michael J. Sullivan book expecting um, lollipops and rainbows, you are reading the wrong author <laughs> because he does some full punches. <laughs> And, um, and they are very difficult, but this one in particular uh, was brightened considerably by relationships, by love, by friendship. So let's see. Um, Michael J. Sullivan in this book in particular, I think it has a little bit of the middle book syndrome, slower paced. Um, because he's really trying to get across to you that life is hard. That life, especially in this setting, is um, brutal. And you have to work extra to live and to um, keep the ones that you love alive. But he also wants to communicate that even though that is the case, that this life is hard, it is nonetheless life and that it is worth living. The war of Age of War has um, come to a standstill and negotiations for peace um, go awry. And our characters have to um, come together in a very unlikely band of um, friends, I say that loosely, <laughs> to, um, to rescue the um, one that, that things went awry with. So it ends on a major cliffhanger I'm very, very thankful that I do not have to wait for the next book to be published. I will be picking up the next book, which I think is Age of Death. Did I tell you what I gave it? I gave it an, an A, 95%. Okay, next one. I read uh, Tolkien's Ordinary Virtues. Um, it's by Mark Eddie Smith. I gave this one an A minus. And um, this is not a book that you should read if you have not read The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings trilogy. So he doesn't try to allegorize anything in this book. This is simply his experiences and his knowledge of The Lord of the Rings and Tolkien and him taking nuggets out and presenting them to you for you to observe and for you to um, possibly 
you know, ponder over and, and consider. And I loved it. Um, I took, it's 150 pages, it's, or thereabouts, and um, little book, but I took four days to read it, um, which if you know how fast I read, that was major. Um, but I, I wanted to absorb it. And I was thinking about this, and I said this in the first three videos that I recorded, so I hopefully will communicate it well, <laughs> um, that Tolkien throughout his four books, um, The Hobbit, uh, Fellowship of the Ring, Two Towers, Return of the King, um, planted fruit bearing trees. And we as the reader um, have the opportunity as we go by those trees to enjoy the fruit because they're, they're now bearing fruit. He was very wise in his planting of them to not make them completely obvious. And some of them are more obvious than others, but he um, was not the kind of writer that wanted to preach. He wanted to entice. And um, so that's what he did. Um, and what Mark does is Mark takes you through the books and he points out the trees and tells you about them. And then he gives you like information, but then leaves it up to you as to how that is applicable to your own life. And the whole book is about virtues. And um, I think it's very easy, it's very approachable, very relatable, but I would highly recommend it for anyone that enjoys Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. It was a wonderful book. All right, and then I got to read this little guy. Um, Christy Lewis from Dostoevsky in Space and uh, Tiffany from Beautiful Minutia started a little Instagram group for me because I can't really do uh, Discord on my phone. And um, so they um, kindly did that so that I could share my thoughts and join in on the read along with them. And I uh, read the first story, the titular story, A Bad Business, in this, and it, did I say it was the book of short stories? It's a book of short stories. <laughs> um, and Dostoevsky has this way of presenting morals in a way that, that you don't really notice until you think about it later. But this book, this little story, oh my goodness, I was laughing so hard. I was actually brought to tears. Um, and my husband was looking at me like, what is going on? <laughs> um, but that's how hard I laughed. I laughed until I had, I had to wipe tears from my eyes. So this opens with three companions, one of which is introduced as our hero and he thinks that he has his finger on the pulse of culture and society. And he decides he needs to set out and prove himself right. And things don't go quite as planned. <laughs> and antics and shenanigans ensue galore. And yeah, it's... um. I had a little bit of, of secondhand embarrassment for the hero. Um, but I couldn't look away. <laughs> I could not. I couldn't stop reading. It was so funny. Um, you feel kind of like you've been dropped in the middle of a sitcom. And it, um, 
you, you just, you do that thing that you do with sitcoms, like, oh, no, 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 don't do that, don't do that, oh, no, what's he gonna do, you know, it's that kind of thing, and, um, and then you close the book, because you're done with the story, and you find yourself reflecting back, and you feel like, Dostoevsky just said to you, this is gonna, this is gonna hurt me more than it's gonna hurt you. And he turned you over his knee and slapped your bum. <laughs> so anyway, I, I, I loved it. Um, I cannot wait to read the next story. I'm showing restraint. I am going to wait and, and read the next one uh, next week. So that one. And then I got to read this one. <sighs> Boys in the Boat by Daniel James Brown. And this was a recommendation from Jillian over at Novel Opinions. And she absolutely loved it. She thought I would love it. And so I am reading it, or I did read it. And I'm so glad I did. I loved this book. So um, I gave this an A+. Plus. I gave a nonfiction book <laughs> a grade because I loved it so much. Um, so this juxtaposes um, what is happening over in Germany with um, Hitler and the, the kind of rise to the place of World War II um, al alongside of America and what's going on in America, which was Great Depression. It was, um, you know, Black Sunday, all of these other things that were really horrible for Americans, Dust Bowl, these boys are at the University of Washington and <clears throat> um, it follows their journey from the very beginning and getting taken on um, as freshmen to um, go on to win the gold medal at the 1936 Olympics and the journey the whole way through. It is not a narrative. It is much, so it's not a blow by blow. Um, and it's not one person's story. It's mainly about one of them, but we find out at the very beginning why it isn't just one person's story. I grew up in Washington State. My little sister went to University of Washington. My mother-in-law went to University of Washington. I knew nothing about this story. Um, but I, and I, I didn't know anything about crew. I didn't know anything about rowing. Um, it does not matter because this story is propulsive. It, it turns the, the story itself into um, the boat. And you're in that boat and you are pulling with those boys. It, it was just fabulous. I think my heart rate was probably equal <laughs> to whatever these boys' heart rate was when they were pulling. He did a, a great job. He acted like one of these boys and um, pulled this beautiful story together so that it was a, a real winner. I loved it. So that was an A-plus read for me. Thank you, Jillian. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And then I got to read my very first graphic novel. And I did this because... Um, I'm participating in Tiffany's uh, summer book bingo, and um, I needed a graphic novel. And 
this one was recommended to me and I was able to get it from my library. So I read Tea Dragon Society. And look at this. Isn't this just, oh, it's so cute. So cute. So um, I'll show you some, some pictures here. So adorable. The artwork completely is appropriate for the story. It's very whimsical. Katie O'Neill is the author of this and she um, is a graphic artist. And so this book is very simplistic in its story. There's no real deep plot or anything. And it's much more about the art than it is about the actual story. Um, it's a quick read. It is um, a girl is our main character. She has memory loss. Our little tea dragons are called that because they're little dragons and they um, actually can grow tea out of them tea or tea grows out of them and the there's older dragons who then gather the tea that the little dragons have grown and tended themselves um, they gather the tea and when they um, prepare it and it is then um, consumed by our main character, it helps her memories return. And so that's basically the whole story line. There are some trigger warnings and I will put those in the description box below um, in case you want to read those. But I think overall, this is just a beautiful story of friendship. It is a story of traditions and honoring traditions and self-care and anyway i think it's so sweet i am probably going to move on so that is everything that i read this week and let me tell you about what i'm continuing in you already saw this one i will be reading uh the second one which is conversations in a graveyard and like i said already started the second one um but set it aside, showing restraint. I will get to it this next week. <laughs> um, and then I have been reading Age of Assassins. This is by R.J. Barker, who wrote the Bone Saga, the not the Bone Saga, the uh, Tide Child trilogy, which is the Bone Ships and Call of the Bone Ships. So the Bone Ships Wake is the next book, but the library um, had other people that were asking for it. I couldn't get it in time, so I decided I wanted to read more R.J. Barker, so I started this one. I'm really enjoying it. I'm not very far in. I'm right there. This is how far I've gotten. Um, and uh, I will be continuing it this week, and I'll tell you more about it when I complete it. Okay, so those are what I'm in the middle of. And then here is what is probably gonna happen next. Um, I don't know if I have everything here, but I'm going to start this. This is Sir Thomas Mallory's Le Mort d'Arthur. Le Mort d'Arthur, Le Mort d'Arthur. I don't know. <laughs> um, but this is the source material for T.H. White's books. Um, and I'm hoping that this one has a little more gravity to it, that it um, deals with subjects appropriately. So I don't know, we'll see, but I'm hoping that a higher grade is on the horizon. And then I also picked up um, the heart keep the harps 
harps of the harp of kings <laughs> you guys that was bad um the harp of kings this is by juliette marillier um who wrote my beloved daughter of the forest book um but i was so disgusted with the rest of the trilogy that i wanted to start something completely different and see if Juliet Marillier could win my heart again. So Harp of Kings, that one is on my radar <laughs> for next week. Then I have My Garden by Mary Russell Mitford. So I've been waiting to read this until summertime because it feels like a summertime read. Um, but it also really works for Summer Book Bingo because there are flowers on the cover. <laughs> so, um, I'll be picking this one up and reading it. It's a little book. It's not going to take very long and lots of pictures. It's illustrated. Oh, it's got lots of illustrations in it too. It's really pretty. So I'll do that one. And then, like I said, continuing on in the um, in the Tea Dragon saga trilogy, I don't know. Um, this one was on the shelves. Uh, the Tea Dragon Society, I had to um, put a hold on, and they had to get it in from another library. But this one was at my library, and so I picked it up. Also, while well, I was there checking out the Dragon Society one. So this is book two, and I will be reading this this week. And I think that is everything. Yes, I'm pretty sure. Oh, no, no, no. I have one more. Children of the New Forest. And this one was recommended to me by one of my nieces. And, um one of the squares on summer book bingo is a kid recommendation and so it's going to fulfill that prompt basically or that square and i'm actually looking forward to it i know tiffany and claire read this during the school year and they really enjoyed it uh, so it was already on my want to read list and um so uh, I have it on hold at the library. If I finish these and I have time, I will be starting um, The Price of Spring, which is the very last book. <laughs> very last book in the Long Price Quartet. And then I won't have any more of the Long Price Quartet to read. I hope that he just really hits it home with it. So it's The Price of Spring and Daniel Abraham and like I said, I have it on hold or a hold on it at the library, but it hasn't come in yet. So if it comes in and I finish these, I will be reading that. I also have a hold on The Alcazar, which is the second book in the duology um, of The Cerulean, which is what I read last month. And that's by Amy Ewing. And um, also not here yet, uh, but on hold at the library. And is that it? Oh, I have one more on hold. Um, it's a new release. I know nothing about it um, other than it's written by Chelsea Abdullah. It is called The Stardust Thief and um, it looked intriguing. So I put a hold on it and if it comes in, then I will be reading that one also. And I think that's it, you guys. Um, I don't think I have any big plans for the weekend. My friend Alexandra over at uh, the Ritual of Reading tagged me in a tag <laughs> about favorites and her video, she vlogged for it. And it was absolutely gorgeous. All of her videos are gorgeous, but this one in particular was so pretty. And um, she is just so soothing, so peaceful to listen to. And 
so I thought that I might try to vlog. I'm not even going to be even close to Alexandra's level, but I thought I might try to vlog that for Tuesday. So um, that may be my weekend plans. What are your weekend plans? Do you have any? And let me know down in the comments if you have read any of the books um, that I have on my radar for this next week and if you enjoyed them or not, especially if you didn't, I want to know why. Um, and yeah, I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful weekend no matter what you're doing. And thanks for joining me. Like if you liked it. Subscribe if you want to. And I'll see you in the next one.